Hi, this is Leah Klein, health and homeless coach. And today my question for you is, is why should you not be afraid? Our verses are Zephaniah 3, 16 and 17. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He exalt over you with loud singing. So why should you not fear? God is with you. You are not alone. We're never alone. As much as we try to say that we're uh, by ourselves and that, you know, we never really are alone. Uh, God is always there. And that is one of the hardest things for us to grasp most of the time because when it's you don't physically see somebody there, you think they're not there. And that is not the case. God is with us and he is not only you know, with us, he will save you. He promises to save you. Whether in this world or in the next, he promises a better life. Now he is not only willing to save you, but he is also happy to save you and be with you. And just think about that verse. Uh, I encourage you to go back and reread that verse, uh, Zephaniah 3, 16, 17. Especially 17. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He exalt over you with loud singing. What does that sound like to you? That does not sound like a passive relationship where God created you and now has left you to your own devices. No, that's like the farthest thing from what it is describing. It is describing intimate connection. Do you think of God that way? Because it should be a two-way street. It should be, we know from our verse, that he thinks of us that way. But are you thinking of him that way also? I want to encourage you to ask God to show you his love and his presence. Because it's there, whether you're feeling it right at the moment or not, that doesn't negate his presence. And... If you don't have that kind of relationship with God, I would ask you, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Because he is our go-between. We are never good enough to approach God. We approach God through the sacrifice of his son. And that is the only path to God. And if you're trying to do it without it, you're not going to have that intimate connection we're describing. That may be why it's boring to you. But if you are a believer, ask God to really help you experience his presence in a new way, a way you haven't been experiencing and to another way to you know encourage you to get deeper 
get more intimate with God is to go on a personal retreat. I know I talk about this all the time, but is that critical and important to your relationship? And especially if you want this kind of connection. Connection requires a two-way street. It requires ongoing communication. It requires hearing from him, not just talking. And that is one of the things you can do when you spend time one-on-one -on -one with God in his creation. He will meet you there. You will find him if you seek him because he was already there. He was, I had already seeked you out. You just need to notice that he is there and let him draw you into a more intimate connection with him. If you happen to be in Arizona, of course, I do have a retreat where I talk more about how to do this. Uh, it's just a one day event um, with transit time, probably eight to three uh, and uh, allowing for weather issues that can come up in July. Uh, we're not necessarily going to commit to going late, but we can if we, if God parts the waves and <laughs> has, the, has no rain uh, come into our purview, which has been known to happen. I have gone on retreats and watched the storm go to all the way around me. So God works miracles when you make the commitment and spend time with him. But that's July 22nd here on Mount Lemmon in Arizona. If you want to know more about that, reach out to me. But I want to wrap up our time by singing Boldly I Approach which has special significance, of course, to me because it's one of my dad's favorite songs. And it is one of the ones we had in a service in February. Um, so if I get choked up, that's fine. Uh, but I encourage you, if you know it, sing along uh, or feel free to just listen. By grace alone, somehow I stand. Where even angels fear to tread, invited by redeeming love, before the throne of God above, He pulls me close with nails guard hands into His everlasting arms. When condemnation grips my heart and Satan tempts me to despair. I hear the voice that shatters fear. The great I am, the Lord is here. Oh, praise the one who fights for me and shields my soul eternally. Boldly I approach your throne. Blameless now I'm running home. By your blood I come. Welcome as you will into the arms of majesty. Behold the bright and risen sun, more beauty than this world has known. I'm face to face with love himself, his perfect spotless righteousness. A thousand weeks, a thousand times are not enough to sing his praise. Only I approach your throne. Blame us now, I'm running cold. By your blood I come, welcome as your own, into the arms of majesty. I will see you next week with another verse. See you then.